Thanks, Rene, for the introduction. Okay. So I think you guys can kind of hear me. Yes, okay. And uh, I'm going to start. So uh, this is our, our work with, uh, my work with Megalibidon on the, uh, and presenting here phase transitioning aspects of the model. And this work is also uh, advised by uh, Rene and uh, thanks to his great advice that we can make this uh, into the uh, aspect model and into our own research. So what we are going to do is uh, we are modeling a subduction zone and uh, we want to model it so that we can incorporate the effect of the mental transition zone. And what you can see here uh, is a force balance. There are specific force balance related to the mental transition zone, namely uh, 400 and 10, 660, and the metastable olivine, if you guys know what it is about. So if not, you can talk to me after the, uh, this talk. And uh, another thing we want to model is the shear zone on the shallow region, which you can see here. For those of you who have experience, you know the shear zone is a low viscosity region. And we want to combine with a phase transition of the basaltic composition of the crust to uh, ecologic composition and to model it consistently with the uh, viscosity feedback. <laughs> so this brings us to uh, implement a dependence on physics. And it, as you can see here is the example of density. And I have, I, I have taken a great care to write this, but I'm still not sure if I read it all right. So here you can see the first two contributions are what we have in aspects, namely the uh, temperature and the conditions. And the third one is what we are going to add is a dependent um, phases. So for each one of the phases for the ice composition, you basically need to add a uh, deviation from the original density based on a phase function. And this is uh, defined in a funky way, which I'm going to talk about in later slides. But the important thing to note here is that you have to mark, match the phases of each one to the uh, compositions of each one. And then we want to bring this to uh, viscosity as we are using a composite viscosity here. So that what we decided to do is to uh, compute the uh, rheology parameters based on physics. So basically bringing a new dependence on physics of all those parameters N, E, and, and other things. <laughs> and hopefully we are going to incorporate a phase diagram of the cross uh, and tune it specifically for subduction zone. As you can see here, the origin lines are the uh, temperature for uh, subduction zone surface. And uh, all the other things, uh, basically classic uh, phase diagram from uh, I think this is from Hector 2003. I didn't put it here, sorry for that. So what we ended up doing is we add up another layer into a already we previously had in aspect. Uh, so property and compositions, those are the things that we originally, uh, we previously had in aspects. So basically we take those properties on the compositions and we then average them. And now what we did add there is we add a phases layer uh, under the compositions. So what we did not, what we do now is we force compute uh, those properties on this phases. So rho and the viscosity, and then we uh, average them to the compositions and then average them to the properties. And this is done by this funky phase functions uh, that I'm going to talk about now. Uh, so as you can see, I have, uh, noted it here, the phase functions are basically changes between phases. So uh, from fa phase zero to phase one, you have the function uh, F1. Uh, and then from one to two, you have uh, F0, sorry. So, and then from one to two, you have the phase function F1. And uh, so you have uh, the number of phases minus, minus one, uh, number of phase functions for each of these computations. Okay, and, and what we uh, actually compute the phase functions is we first compute a deviation in depth. As you have uh, experiences with phase transitions, uh, this may be a 
uh, a way that you could understand basically uh, think of the uh, think of the Clipperon slope and a, and a point of the phase conditions. So if you take a point in your phase diagram and you take a slope, you can uh, get a straight straight line uh, of phase boundaries on your phase diagram. So this is uh, what we did there. And uh, and why we and and we choose to compute it in depth derivation div because it's it's easier to uh, implement in the in the code. And basically, we can take this and and use a function to compute the phase uh, function value. Uh, which I'm going to show in the later slides. And right now, uh, I'm show, showing you an example input from the 660s, basically depth 660, and Clyde Pong slope uh, minus two uh, <coughs> megapascal for Kelvin and the temperature here. So, as I said, we just take this value of uh, derivation of depth and put that into uh, computation to get the phase function, and we use a form of function uh, in this shape. And uh, this is used in Mac's previous uh, researches. Uh, this is uh, mm, shown to be very good at resolve, resolving a gradual transition uh, from one to 0.5. Uh, so you can have a you can have a boundary. Uh, that is well resolved uh, when you implement this in your uh, computation. And then we weigh those properties. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> and and uh, then we weigh those properties by these phase functions. And basically, we take the uh, difference between two phases and use the phase functions to compute the average on different phases and get the uh, properties on uh, com compositions. And how this is done uh, in the PRM file is, is like this. So what we have before is we have compositions and now we have phases. So we have to implement a new method to, uh, in to input this. So here you first need to give the name of the composition. Uh, let's, let's look at the phase transition depth. So background is the first composition and the default in SBAN. And then you use a uh, separator to separate the key and the values. And the values are impl implemented in this way to have the same number of uh, phases. So if you ended up to have uh, one additional phase, you have one additional input here. So for each of the uh, transitions, you need depth-wise temperature clipping slope. And for the properties, you, you basically put all the properties, including your background, uh, your zero space. So the, the default one. So you have, uh, you, you could see here, this, the numbers of input here uh, has one more compared to the phase transitions. And this is very useful uh, to uh, get a uh, lower and upper mental viscosity difference as we have always done in uh, gel, dynamics, gel dynamics models. So you could basically uh, implement it in the way that I did in the last slides and have a jump in viscosity. And it could also be uh, useful to, uh, to get a phase transition of the crust uh, to, from basal uh, composition to ecologic composition, hopefully. Yeah, so uh, as a comparison to to the to the real phase diagram, this is what I created uh, in aspect using this simple approach. And you can see we we develop it by a point and a slope. And you can extend it a little bit to get the uh, other phase boundaries. I'm not going to dig into that in great depth. So to sum it up, we implement phase transition under the Vis Visco classic module uh, in aspect. And uh, those phase transitions are described by a simple point and the clubbone slope. So the pros of this approach is it works for layer phase transitions. So it works best for the mental transition zones. And it's built for work with composite uh, viscosity. And the cons, it doesn't really take into uh, 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 
the effects, uh, I mean, take into consideration of a complex phase diagram. So that it may not work very good for uh, strongly temperature dependent phase transitions uh, because we define it by Clapeau slope so that if your Clapeau slope is infinite, it, it is not going to work in this way. It's built, and it's also built for simplified phase diagrams only as you can see the phase diagram I created is uh, just has uh, basically three uh, different boundaries. Okay, so this is uh, my presentation. Thank you for staying with me. You guys have a great. Thank you. Um, and I think we even made up uh, a minute or two. So if there are any questions at the moment, we can already answer them now. Oh, Jan, I wanted to ask about the, the limitation that you mentioned, um, the strongly temperature dependent uh, phase transitions and, and why they don't work at the moment. Is that, um, as far as I remember, that is specific to a subduction zone setting because the phase transition would then, for example, reach the surface or would reach pressure ranges where it wouldn't exact exist in reality? Is, is that correct? Oh. Uh, uh, thanks for for this comment. Yeah, this is another issue that we have. But but uh, what I what I what I uh, mentioned in the talks is uh, actually we need this uh, temperature dependent uh, uh, phase transition to uh, equalize physics for those of you who are very familiar with that, uh, because it's really temp it is strongly temperature temperature dependent and and and, and actually I, I know that people. Uh, actually, it's, it's just I use it with a straight line vertically. So thanks for your comments, but uh, that is another issue that if any of you uh, may encounter with this approach, uh, I, I'm very hope, uh, you know, willing to, uh, to, to, to give you uh, my, my uh, experience of, of solving that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.